All right. So let's start out with asteroid composition. When we look at different types of asteroids, um, we find three primary different types of composition. One type is called C-type or carbonaceous. Those are rich in carbon. And those are generally more primitive. They are um, basically the leftovers of original planetesimals and they're dark in color. The S-type asteroids, those are silicate. Those are made of silicon, oxygen, and some other trace materials. Um, those are generally lighter than the carbonaceous um, in terms of their density, and they are fairly bright. And then the last type of asteroid is M-type, which is metallic, mostly nickel and iron. And these are generally made of heavy metals from a planetesimal that had been broken apart by a collision. And these are not bright in um, the visible light range, but they are bright in radio frequencies. So to measure asteroids and measure these different types of composition, um, generally we study the light that they give off, the light that they reflect from the sun. And by studying the different colors that they reflect, we can tell what their composition is. So when we look at these different materials, we can find some um, analogies to our planets. So a question for you, which class of asteroids is the Earth's crust most similar in composition to? Yeah, so it's definitely not those M-type asteroids, but instead the Earth's crust is more like those S-type. So Earth's crust, as well as the crust of Mars are rich in silicon. All right, so what about um, the Earth's core? Yeah, so the Earth's core is made of nickel and iron, so it's very similar in composition to the M-type asteroids. And so for that reason, when we look at asteroids and we try to piece together um, where did they come from, why do they have these compositions, our assumption is that the larger asteroids are mostly just planetesimals that never became full-blown planets. Um, some of the largest asteroids are considered dwarf planets, so those are what we mean by leftover planetesimals. Here's Ceres, it's large enough, more, massive enough to be actually pulled into a round shape. Um, there's also Vesta, which is a little bit more irregular in shape, but still rather large, and then Eros. And then our, um, our interpretation of the smaller asteroids is that those were created when larger planetesimals collided. And so if the collision product was on the surface of a differentiated planetesimal, then it would be made of S-type material. That would be lighter material that had risen to the surface of the planetesimal during the process of differentiation. But the M-type asteroids, those would come from the interiors. Okay, um, question for you. Um, the large asteroid Vesta has a surface made of basalt. So see if you can recall. What does basalt at the surface indicate? Okay, I see a lot of one and two. Um, both of those are good guesses. Basalt is indeed lava rock, but just because there's basalt there now doesn't mean that it currently has active volcanoes, but it does mean that some lava would have had to um, flood the surface at some point. So therefore that indicates that it has a differentiated interior. Um, why do we think that? Well. If an object has differentiated, then it must at one point have been molten. And so when things are molten, that's when lava can flow. For example, lava flows out of Earth's crust because our mantle is still molten. So Vesta has a differentiated interior. Um, oops, sorry, I missed a slide there. Um, so both those large asteroids, Vesta and Ceres, appear to be differentiated. And the proof that we have for that are both the basalt on the surface of Vesta. And then also Ceres has some salt deposits. Um, and we interpret that as coming from a subsurface saltwater ocean. Um, and so you can see here, this is salt that has oozed out of the center of a large um, crater impact. So, it might be that there's still a subsurface ocean on Ceres now, or it could be that it was once liquid and is now frozen. We don't know. So this is a um, ice volcano that's left over from the process of that salt water oozing out of the surface. 
So we know that since the interior of Ceres has some molten substance that it must be differentiated. All right. Um, when we look at asteroid composition, they turn out to have various different compositions based on their distance from the sun. So those S-type and M-type asteroids, the ones that we interpret as being the crusts and the cores of larger planetesimals that have collided. So those collision products tend to be overlapped in space. Um, this supports our hypothesis that they are from the crust and core of collision products. Those tend to be closer to the sun and then the C-type asteroids tend to be farther from the sun. I'm not actually sure how to explain why that um, the more primitive carbonaceous asteroids would be farther from the sun, except that it's, it fits the overall pattern of higher density um, closer to the sun rather than lower density. 